In this GrainMA3 tutorial, we are going to look at some of the different settings you can use on your executors and your sequences. There's a gazillion different things you can do with the buttons. Uh, you can configure them in different ways and uh, they all have different purposes. So uh, let's just get into it. So of course, we set this one up with a Go Minus and a Go Plus button. We've used that many times before. You simply press Go Plus and go minus, and it uh, takes the time right over here. To get into the settings to change the button press, you press any sequence, and you go into the buttons down here, and we can start from the top and say this one, we go this one forward and this one backwards. So this one is skip forward uh, without any time. So if I press this one, you can see it completely disregards the timing I set here. This one never takes time, it simply just skips from Q to Q. If we go into the settings again and we press uh, black down here and we close this one down, if I press this button it simply does a blackout on that sequence and that sequence alone. So every time I press and hold the button it goes to black and when I release it, uh, it comes back. It doesn't uh, release the, the sequence in any way, it simply just takes the intensity down to zero. Back into the settings again, we try the next option, uh, it's a speed option, we'll save that for another episode. The flash button, we can go down here and we can uh, actually configure this one to an off button. So we can turn this sequence off, now it's off. If I press the flash button, it simply turns on everything that's on here and it releases it again. You can see it's active up here as uh, when I, the button is pressed and when I release, it simply releases the sequence again. We go back into the settings and we find the next one, go plus, go minus, we already covered. Go to is the next one. So if I press go to, it simply presents me with a uh, GUI interface uh, where I can select my next queue and it goes straight there. So go to my CTO, go to my Cyan, it's very, very simple, that's go to. And if this is all Russian to you, you are more than welcome to sign up to my email list. I'm gonna notify you when I open my GrainMA3 online school and you can uh, get notified when, when something new is happening there. So uh, check out the uh, email list, there's a link in the description. Into the settings again and we change to the next one, that's also two speed options which we're not going to cover in this one. The next one is load and we change this one to a go plus because we need that in a second. So if we say we have our Cyan queue active right now, I press the load button, once again it presents me with a user interface where I can pick my next uh, Q. I press the Ember one and it's now loaded and ready to go. And as soon as I press go up here, it goes to the next Q. And uh, again, I can load maybe my white position up here or my white Q. And it doesn't do anything until I press go next time on that sequence. We go back into the settings and take the next one on and off. It's quite self-explanatory, I would say. Uh, we have off our Q list and we can on our Q list again. Very, very simple, it's simple uh, a toggle on and off. Into the settings again, and we take the next one, it's our pause button, and we configure this one to a go plus button. So if I go my sequence again, you can see it does a fade in two seconds. If I go and pause, it simply stops until my next go. And when I press go, it actually activates the next queue as well, which I think is a bug, but uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But that's the pause button. We simply go into the settings again and pick the next one. It's a RAID one. We are not going to cover this one in this episode. Select is quite simple. Again, if I select a queue list up here, you can see it's uh, yellow. And if I press this button here, it simply selects my sequence here and it puts it into the uh, selected uh, options down here. I can always use the select keyword and then I can select any sequence here, but you can also simply make a shortcut and use a select button on your sequence. We go back into the settings again and we take the next one which is cell fix. Cell fix is basically select all the fixtures that are in your sequence. Uh, in this case uh, we have all our asterisks active in this sequence so if I press cell fix you can see it selected the fixtures and it actually put them into the programmer as well. So now I can easily manipulate whatever is in this sequence. And sometimes if you have a strange selection in a sequence, cell fix is really valuable because it easily selects what is in that sequence. You don't have to think about what was in the sequence. It automatically selects everything that is active in that sequence. So that is cell fix. 
And if you haven't joined our Discord community yet, there's a link in the description down below. Uh, click up and uh, sign up for our Discord community. There's a lot of cool people in there. We're actually almost 300 people in there now answering Granny May 3 related questions. So uh, I'll see you on Discord. So we clear everything and we go back into the settings one more time. We skip the speed one and we go straight into swap. I'm actually going to show swap on a different, uh, different uh, sequence over here. I take all my vibers and I put them into swap. We go back into our color sequence and we set that to go minus. And we close this one down. Now I have all my astros active here. And in this one I have all my vipers pointing up into the air. And if I press my go plus down here you can see they go all the way up. Let's just off this one again and off the other sequence as well. I take all my vipers again, sorry all my astros again and make them active and I take all my vipers and I swap. You can see all my astros turned off and all my vipers are now active because we swapped the intensity. As soon as I release, they go back to where they were before. So swap is very, very cool if you do like busking shows and you want to do some, uh, some, some really hard effect and you want to turn off everything, but the blinder, for instance, swap is great. What you can do is swap protect your main cue list if you want to, if that makes sense to you. So you can go into the settings in here of your main cue list and you can swap protect it. Now, if any swap is pressed anywhere on the console, they're not gonna turn off. So that is the swap options. We go back into the settings again and we go back to the handle options down here and we take the next one, time. Time is basically a toggle. If you want to turn on the time here, you can see it now skips uh, in no time and it comes from in here, uh, the selected time in here. So if I take the selected time and turn that all the way up to 10 seconds and I press go, now it's not two second fade, it's a 10 second fade because time is active. Again, I can simply toggle it off and if I go back in here, you can see it's not selected anymore and then I can Press go and we are back at two seconds. So that is time. Let's go back into the settings again and see what we can find next time. The next one is temp. And temp is actually best shown on a fader. I prepared a temp fader over here. If you go in here and you set the fader to temp. And what is temp? Temp is basically a crossfade. A crossfade between where your fixtures are previous until you take the fader up and where they are going next time. So in this case, this is just all my vipers turning on and going up into the, uh, the air. And as you can see, when I turn the uh, fader up, it simply takes all the values and, and crossfades them on or in or whatever you want to call it. So uh, temp fader is brilliant if you want to maybe follow a guitarist on stage. You can uh, put a pan movement, you can put uh, all your moving lights in your main cue in the left side and then your temp fader can move them all the way across to the right side. And then you can simply follow the guitarist with your fader. It's also valuable if you are using some smoke machines where you have the fan module and the blower module or the haze module inside the uh, fixture itself. So it's not the dimmer you are controlling. You can actually use temp and then you can crossfade uh, between uh, this no smoke and full smoke. So that's the temp fader. It's actually quite useful. If we go back into the settings again and we go down to toggle, down here we have a uh, toggle button down here. This is all my house lights. As you can see, this is just a simple button. Uh, it's just a toggle between whatever's in the sequence uh, on or off. So if I, I just put a small uh, PAR64 PAR can up here in the roof, if I toggle that on, uh, it stays on until I toggle it off. So that is basically what toggle does. Into the settings again and we take the last one which is top. I use top quite a bit actually. If I have a sequence uh, as I have right here, we can maybe just select it. You can see right now I go through the sequence and if you are doing a show, sometimes you just want to take all your uh, colors uh, back into white for instance. And then top, the only thing top does, it goes to the first cue of your sequence. So that is what top does. Go through your cues. If you forget where you were, you don't have to back four steps. You simply press top 
and it goes all the way up. If you liked this video and it brought any value to you, you are more than welcome to give it a like. That's going to indicate to YouTube that it's uh, valuable and uh, has some valuable content in it. And if you want to learn more about Grand MA3 on your journey of learning it, you can uh, check out this next video on my channel where we cover some other topics of the Grand MA3. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, as I said, and uh, I hope to see you next time. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a happy Grain MA3 programming session checking out all this stuff. See ya.